Hey, Pickles. My goal for reading in 2020 was to read 50 books. And then 2020 was um, a year and I ended up reading 70 books. Reading was one of the things that got me through 2020 and got me through all of the lockdowns. And I ended up finding some genres and some books that really just helped me in that time. And um, I want to share those with you. But first I thought I'd share some reading stats. So here are the genres of books I read. The two genres that sort of stood out to me as books I read most this year were historical romances and YA fantasy. I really liked the sort of escapism and fun and angst that I found in all of these books. Um, I read 19 YA fantasy books this year, which is a lot more than I would usually read. And I also read 12 historical romances. And this was partly due to finding um, new authors that I really liked within that genre. And it's a genre I haven't explored that much in the past. And uh, so it was really nice to find a new genre this year. I also read 11 adult fiction but that's across sort of like historical fiction and horror and other genres and then I read nine contemporary romances though those are genres that I usually find myself leaning into more. Here's a little infographic that shows what the star ratings of the books I read this year were. 50% of the books I read this year were four star reads and 20% were five star reads. This meant that 70% of my books overall were what I would classify as very good or excellent or lifetime favourites. You know, all of those books that like I really really had a connection with which meant this year's reading was excellent and to be honest lots of the three star reads I read as well were really good books. They were just perhaps didn't like quite click with me in the same way. I only had 6% of my books be two star or one star which I think was pretty impressive. That's only four books overall that I just didn't like. So here are the top 10 books that I read in 2020. Not all of these were published in 2020. In fact, I think maybe only one of them was, but these are books that I read this year and really enjoyed. So the first book that's on my favourites list this year is Salacia by Mary Ellis Dunning. It's a poetry collection that explores mythology, love, loss, mental health through lots of recurring images of the sea and the ocean, as well as lots of um, landscapes from around Wales, which is where the author is from. I really found this poetry collection was very moving and personal and um, there were several poems in there that made me tear up and I have lots of little tabs in my collection of uh, some of my favourite poems including the title poem Salacia. I think there's a really approachable poetry collection, it doesn't try to be pretentious, it's just very birthed in imagery and mythology and all of these beautiful real life moments, some of which are quite painful to read about, but that really help you to connect to the core of the poems and the emotions that it's portraying. My second favourite book of 2020 is one that everybody has been talking about on booktube, it's Legendborn by Tracy Dion. So this book is a YA fantasy following Brie who has recently lost her mother and to escape her hometown and her family she signs up to a residential program for gifted youth at UNC which is meant to help them get into college. In her first week there she sees a demon and this spirals into a whole series of events that lead to her realising that there is a secret society on this campus that is magical. Um, the whole book is interweaved with magic, it's very highly linked to King Arthur mythology, it's a retelling of that alongside different stems of magic within the world and honestly I love this book because the world building here and the magic system just felt really unique and all of the characters felt really well fleshed out. It was a really diverse cast from gender, sexuality, race everything was really interestingly explored but through this fantasy world and I felt like all of the characters were people that you could connect to in some way or you can understand their motivations which I think makes a really good fantasy plot. Another of my favourite reads this year was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is another YA fantasy book focused on Elizabeth Scrivener who is a foundling raised in a library. Now the libraries in Ostermere are slightly different, they host a bunch of grimoires which trap sort of magic within them. If provoked however these grimoires will turn into these like horrific beasts of like leather and paper and ink. This is a world where sorcerers are evil and magic is very much real. But when an act of sabotage releases one of the library's most dangerous grimoires and Elizabeth is implicated in the crime, she has to pair up with a sorcerer in order to save her name. But this sorcerer is Nathaniel Thorne. 
He's a very charming and attractive young sorcerer who has his demon, Silas, who is another very brilliant character within the novel. And they partner with Elizabeth to try and sort out the mess that this release of the grimoire has caused. All of the characters here are really charming and you really sort of connect to them. There is a brilliant love story. And also Silas is just such an amazing side character and so charming uh, and so unique. I just felt that Margaret Rogerson's world building here really had me enthralled. It's really nice to have a YA fantasy that is a standalone and has such great world building and characters within it. I feel like often the YA fantasies that are pushed to the forefront are ones that are part of a much larger series. So it's nice to have this world that's just within itself and it has such a focus on books that all book lovers are going to love it. The Binding by Bridget Collins is another of my favourite fantasies this year that happens to focus on books. It follows Emmett Farmer, the apprentice of a bookbinder. In this world, books hold secrets. You can have memories stored in them and taken away from you. I feel like this is one of those books where if I tell you too much about the plot, it will ruin it. What I found so captivating about this story is that it's set in three parts and each one of them feels like there's a massive twist between them. There are so many secrets and so many layers to this world and this story there's a beautiful romance there's queer representation there's an amazing um, exploration of how power can corrupt and how people in power can manipulate the world around them I truly thought that this book was one of the most moving fantasies books I have ever read it is an extremely dark read and I would recommend checking the trigger warnings before reading it if you are looking for a really atmospheric gothic ghost read then look no further than Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. This is a historical fiction with an element of ghost story and an element of magic behind it. Maud's father is a really respected landowner in his community however he is a horrible father and one day he stumbles upon an eye in the grass which turns out to be a doom painting that has been long lost. After finding this doom painting, he feels he cannot stop thinking about it. He does research on it, he goes to see it, and he is entirely haunted by it. This book is a really clever exploration into the mind of a psychopath and paranoia. This book explores the boundaries between the real and supernatural, and through Maud's perspective, we see her father's descent into paranoia. It's a really chilling and haunting read. It's very dark. I feel like Maud's character is really sympathetic. It's also a story about secret secrets and loss and death and how these things can affect a person. I know that this book is a long time favourite of many and this year I finally got round to reading The Poet's X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a YA story written in verse. It follows Ziamara and her life growing up in Harlem. She's a girl who's going through many of the struggles that many teenage girls go through from love to dealing with her parents to dealing with religion and what she truly believes in. All of this is told to the backdrop of her discovering her love of poetry and because of this connection between the form that this story is written in and her own story it feels like a very authentic exploration of the coming of age story. The fact that this story is told in verse just makes it so much more beautiful. There are specific poems in there that made me cry. There are moments in her story that I really felt I related to. Um, and it's one of the best YA stories, I think, that really truly explores what it's like growing up as a woman. I have one non-fiction on this list and it's several short sentences about writing by Verlin Klinkenborg. I don't really want to talk much about what this book's about. It is literally what it says. It is many short sentences and little extracts about writing that help you if you want to become a writer. It's a really well-written piece. Unlike lots of writing on craft, it is a very approachable feel. The nice thing about how this is written is that it's in little snippets that you can pick out advice from that helps you specifically. It really helps you think about how the small aspects of your writing, like sentences, affect the piece overall and it's a really great beginner's book on craft and I found it super useful while studying my MA. Another book I can't shut up about this year is Bunny by Mona Awad. The thing about this book is it's so hard to explain, it's really weird. It's based on an MFA course at Warren University following Samantha. She finds herself slipping in with another group of girls on her course who she refers to as the Bunnies. These girls hold a smut salon which they eventually invite Samantha to and it's essentially the exploration of what it's like to join a cult. This book is so strange but so captivating. I found everything about it really entertaining and it's one of those books that just stuck with me. I cannot stop thinking about it. The whole story is so strange and so ethereal and yet 
comedic and dark at the same time. I really think if you enjoy strange fiction then this is the perfect book for you. It's not necessarily the most easy read as it's very hard sometimes to work out what's going on but I really enjoyed it. My next favourite book is Maybe a Cheat because it's sort of a favourite book slash author. So this year I discovered Tessa Dare and honestly her books are the perfect escapism. If you want historical romance that doesn't feel dated, that has really captivating love stories, then Tessa Dare is for you. My favourite of her books this year was Romancing the Duke. This story follows Izzy who inherits a castle when her father dies, except when she gets there she finds that the former owner, the Duke or Ransom still thinks that the castle belongs to him. Shenanigans ensue in which both of these characters try and get the other one to leave the castle and of course that causes a great romance plot. There's a whole amazing subplot to the story where Izzy's father was a famous author who had legions of fans and a fan culture where these people dressed up as the characters from his books and they still write to Izzy. This is a whole element that adds a lot of fun to the story and makes it very light-hearted and what I love about Tessa Dare is that there are always moments of real emotion and real darkness and character exploration alongside these light-hearted moments and all of her books that I read this year I thoroughly enjoyed. This was probably just my favourite one. Last but not least, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty is the first in the Davabad trilogy. I feel like I don't need to say a lot about this series as it's so popular on YouTube but just as a quick summary, Nari is a street healer by day and con woman by night who accidentally summons a djinn who is this mysterious, handsome, magical creature who takes her to this whole other world that she realises she is intrinsically part of and she discovers that she has actually got magic herself. The amazing thing about this book is it creates such an enthralling world. It's so textured, there are so many layers of magic and world building and scene setting. There are so many different characters and morals going on that you you don't always know if the person you're following is actually doing the right thing. I really loved this story and I've read the first two in the series and can't wait to get to the third one. I'm going to link all of these books below so you can check them out yourselves. I'm sure there are people who have done much better plot summaries on different platforms. My reading goal for this year is to read 75 books and I can't wait to take you along on the journey. Later Skirkins.